So in this video, we're going to be simplifying thirds. So it's going to be useful to be able to think about square numbers. So I'm going to write all those down. Now, if you don't have all these stored in your head, I recommend you write these down whenever you're simplifying thirds, just so you can refer to them. Okay, let's look at some third. Okay, so here's our first third, and we are going to simplify the following third. So how do we do it? All right. We look at the square root of 24, we look at the number 24, the thing inside the third, inside the square root, and we say, can I break this up into two other numbers, two other numbers, and one of those numbers be a square number? Yes, I can. 24 is the same as 4 times 6. Okay, and now... Look at this 4, it's a square number, and it's inside of a square root. So, we can take that 4 and bring it outside of the square root. And when we do, we need to square root it, right? Because we're taking it out of the square root, so we have to take the square root of it. So, the answer is, the square root of 4 is 2, so that comes on the outside. And then, what's left over? The 6 is still inside the third. So... The square root of 24, in its simplest third form, is 2 square root 6. I'm going to do a couple more examples, and then I'm going to start explaining why this is working. Okay, simplify the square root of 125. If we want to do that, we need to break the number 125 into two numbers, one of which is a square number. Oh, look, it ends in 25. So, that's going to be 25. 25 times, and 25 times what makes 125? 25 times 5. Okay, and now that we've done that, we bring the 25 out of the square root, and when we do, we need to square root it. So the square root of 25 is 5, so that's going to be on the outside, and we're left over with a 5. 5 root 5. I've ruined my colour scheme. So another example here, and I want to show you that you don't have to just stare at it blankly and like just wait for the answer to appear. You can work through this systematically. Okay, it's an odd number. Uh, so that means that none of the even numbers are going to work. None of these are any good to me. Okay, now it's got to be something times something, a square number times something else. The smallest number that the something else could be is 2, right? If that was a 2 there, it's not, but if it was a 2 there, then this number could only be as large as half of this, right? So half of 135, it's about 70, right? Which means that our answer can't be 81, because 81 times 2 would be larger than that. So we can strike that one out as well. 1 is always useless. I don't even know why I've put it in the list. So that's out. So what am I left with? I'm left with 9, 25. Well, it can't be 25 because any number multiplied by 25 is going to be 25, 50, 75, or 100. So that one's out. Uh, and I'm left with 9 and 49. Now, some of you might know the divisibility test for 9. If you don't, you're about to learn it. 1, 3, and 5. 1 plus 3 plus 5. 1 plus 3 plus 5. When I add those numbers together, I get the number 9. If those numbers, 1 plus 3 plus 5, add up to 9, then the number is divisible by 9. So I know for sure that 135 is divisible by 9. So 9 times something is 135. If I divide that on my calculator, I find out that 9 times 15 is equal to 135. Okay, and now that I've done that, we can take this 9 out of here, and we're left with 3 root 15. Alright, so I've done that third example to show you that you don't have to just stare at them. You can sort of work through them systematically to figure out which one could be the answer. Particularly useful when they're, they're odd, because you can immediately cut a bunch out. Important to note, if it was even you can't throw out the odd ones, because an odd one times two will be an even number. Okay, let's get rid of that. Let's talk about why this works. It works because indices are thirds. And you already know one of your index laws says something like this. If you've got two numbers multiplied together and you raise them to a power, that's the same as a to the n 
times b to the n. Okay, so a, a times b, two numbers multiplied together, two numbers multiplied together to the power of something, remember a square root is a power, is equal to the square root of that thing or the power of that thing, the power of that thing. All right, let's make it more like a third. A B to the power of one half is equal to A to the half, B to the half. All right, instead of the ends, we're doing powers of halves. Okay, still not, still doesn't look quite like a third, but remember, to the power of a half is a third. So we can say that the square root of A B. The square root of a times b, the square root of a times b is equal to the square root of a times the square root of b. And so what we're doing when we're simplifying it is strategically choosing the numbers that we want our single number to be multiples of, strategically choosing them so that one of them, when we square root it, is a perfect square, it comes out neatly. The 4 comes out as a 2, the 25 comes out as a 5, the 9 comes out as a 3. Okay, so that's what's happening here. I just want to do a couple more examples because there might be some that sort of trick you up just a little. So there are two things that I want you to take away from this one here. So look, there's a 5 out the front. Don't be scared. That just says 5 times the square root of 128. So easy to deal with. 5 times, you can draw a little multiply sign in here, but I, I don't... I don't do it. Okay, and then we're multiplying by two numbers. One of them needs to be a square number. All right, so if you're working systematically here, you might say to yourself, I'll start from the top and I'll work my way down. Not a good idea. You should actually start from the bottom and work your way, way up. But let's start from the top, see what happens. Because I, I want you to see something. If I do 128 divided by four, I get a nice number here, I get 32. Okay, so we can know that we can break this up into 4 times 32. Okay, and now we bring our 4 out. When we bring our 4 out, two things are happening here. We're square rooting the 4, so that gives us the square root of 4 is 2. Uh, and then we're multiplying it by the 5, because the 5 was already there to begin with. We bring the 2 out, 5 times 2. So what do we got? 5 times 2 is 10 root 32. And you might think, I'm finished. I did it. I did a thing. It's the end. It's not fully simplified. You've simplified it a bit, but you haven't made it all the way yet. Because in fact, when we look at root 32, we can go further with that. So we can write 10. And you might say, well, 32. Um, I'll do the same trick again. I'll start from the bottom and from the top. Four. Uh, four times what? Four times eight. Okay, and then you bring the 4 out again. Zoop. Uh, the square root of 4 is 2. 10 times 2 is 20. And you've got root 8. And then you might say, yep, yeah, I'm finished. 8. 8 can be simplified. So we can go further again because we have 20. And we can say root 8 is the same as 4 times 2. And then that 4 can come out again. The square root of 4 is 2. So we've got 20 times 2 is 40 root 2. And now we're finished. The square root of 2, you can't simplify the square root of 2. You'll start to recognize these square, these thirds, root 2, root 3, root 5, root 7, as being unsimplifiable. And this is one of them. Okay, must be a better way. And I already said the better way is not to start from the top of the list, it's to start from the bottom of the list and start asking yourself, can I use this one? Can I use this one? And work your way up. Because if you did that, if you did that, this question becomes so much simpler. We have five root. Okay, let's start from the bottom. Does 100 go into 128? No, too big, it's more than half of 128. 81, no, 81 doesn't go into 128, it's more than half. 64, hmm, wait a minute. 64 times two is 128. 
64 times 2. And then we see this 64, we can bring it out. The square root of 64 is 8. 8 times 5 is 40. Root 2. And then we're done. Okay, so a few things I want you to take away from here. You need to know these things. You need to break these things up. You need to remember to square root them when you're finished. And you should work your way up from the bottom. Uh, now, you might run into some issues here because these are not all the square numbers. There's an infinite number of square numbers. So be careful. When I say work from the bottom, I mean work from the highest possible number, which is half of whatever this is. So 121, 144, 169. The numbers continue. There's endless numbers, but these are good ones to get, get started with. Don't panic, though, if you don't find the largest number because you can work your way slowly to the answer using smaller numbers. All right, that's it.